I call uh, Claire Curran, five minutes. Well, I'd like to uh, start off by agreeing with Chris Bishop, which is something that I really do, um, that in, in, in um, quite genuinely that this is an important uh, piece of legislation uh, and Labor will be supporting it. Um, I also would like to commend the work being done by the Minister, Amy Adams, on this. Um, uh, although, in saying that, I agree with the Green member, Jan Logie, that there is much more to do, that this is just one part of, uh, of the work that needs to be done to improve uh, uh, the situation around family violence and sexual assault in our country. Uh, which is woeful, and uh, improving the law um, is, and improving the court processes for vulnerable witnesses is an important part of that, but it's just a part of it, uh, although um, it is good to have a cord around the House on this issue tonight, and it is rare that we have a piece of legislation where everybody has worked hard um, in the same direction and, um, and feel strongly about it. Um, I do note, though, that this, uh, is, uh, this piece of change in legislation relates to a Law Commission report from 2013, uh, which has been essentially in abeyance um, until it was picked up under Ad Amy Adams as the uh, Justice Minister, that it wasn't until that was picked up that things started moving. And I would note, Mr Speaker, that it would be good if things could start moving on a couple of other um, Law Commission reports such as the um, report into um, the Privacy Act and the report on the Official Information Act that there are much needed law changes needed in those areas as well. This particular piece of legislation does a number of things because my time is short. I'll confine my remarks to two of them. Um, the first uh, is around the change that it makes to witnesses under 18 who can give evidence um, other it has made easier for them to give evidence other than sitting in court. This is um, uh, highly uh, overdue and is uh, a bit of a no-brainer, really. Um, and uh, there's been quite a lot of discussion on that this afternoon, so I won't um, continue that. I do want to make some remarks around this, the requirement that Defence Council give advance notice if they intend to bring evidence about um, a history of a, a, the sexual history of a complainant in sexual offence cases. Um, Mr. Speaker, the record of sexual violence against women and children in this country is woeful, um, and sexual assault victims are being deterred from coming forward because of the low conviction rate in New Zealand. And I think we all know this. Um, here we have a concrete measure which may start to give um, women the sense that they will have more chance of getting a conviction, they will have more chance of getting heard, and because it takes so much courage to come forward to report a sexual assault, let alone to take it right through the court system. Um, in 2015, 4,801 sexual assault crimes occurred in New Zealand. Um, and only 1,007 of those crimes made it to court last year with just 635 convictions, which meant that for 2015 there were convictions for about 13% of reported sexual assault crimes in New Zealand. That just simply is not good enough. In the year to date, 18% um, fewer sexual assaults have led to court action so far this financial year compared to the last financial year where 16.2% um, led to court action um, in the 2015-16 year to date compared to 19.2% in, in 2014. Um, so, Mr Speaker, the, the change that's been made on this um, has been tweaked in the Select Committee. Uh, it's become much more uh, specific, um, but it, what it does do is provide a process for giving notice uh, when a party proposes to offer evidence or question a witness about the sexual experience of, their, of a complainant. This means that for the courage that it takes for women to report sexual abuse crimes and to actually get up in court and speak about them, this make, uh, may make things easier for them. I call uh, Moira.